We last talked about quicksort, which is the first of our sorting algorithms to break the n squared barrier and operate at O of n log n time in its best case. Merge sort is another algorithm that uses a recursive divide and conquer approach to do the same thing. Here's a, a basic outline of its approach. We find the middle position of the array and we're recursively sorting the left and right subarrays. In other words, we're dividing and conquering. We're splitting it into smaller versions of itself. Eventually, we take two sorted subarrays after we've already sort sorted them and we merge them back into a single array again. We stop this when the arrays can't be subdivided any further. We might structure this using three methods. Uh, we'll start with a merge sort method. This is the public method that clients call. Uh, we would also have a helper method, merge sort helper, which essentially allows us to hide an extra parameter that we don't want clients to know about, but that we do want to use as we're actually doing the sorting. And finally, we have a merge helper method that actually does the merging. Like it takes two sorted subarrays and gives us back one single sorted overall array. Now the process of merging uses an extra array, which we're going to call copy buffer. We want to avoid the overhead of allocating and deallocating the copy buffer every time we call merge. So we allocate this array copy buffer just a single time in merge sort, that public method, and then we pass it to merge sort helper uh, every, and, and merge anytime we want to actually do something. So that means every time merge sort helper is called, it has to know the bounds of the subarray that it's working with. To do that, we use two parameters, low and high. We can start by looking at the code for that top level method merge sort, which our clients will actually see. And it takes a single parameter, a, which is the array that we want to sort. Inside this method, we create a copy buffer the same length as a, and then the only thing that happens is we call our merge sort helper method, which is really our workhorse in this situation. We give it a, we give it our copy buffer, and we give it the lower and upper bounds, zero and a dot length minus one. Now, given that merge sort helper has been passed a subarray that has at least two elements in it, merge sort helper is going to compute the midpoint of the subarray, and then it's going to recursively sort the portions below and above that midpoint with recursive calls to itself. Finally, it's going to call merge to merge the results back into a single array. Here's what that code looks like. So as long as low is less than high, then we will calculate the midpoint, have our two recursive calls, note the different values of low and high, and finally we'll call our merge helper method to remerge them. Now here you can see the subarrays that get generated during all the recursive calls to merge sort helper, starting with an array of eight items to begin with. Now it's worth noting here that in this example, the subarrays are all evenly subdivided at every stage. That's because we're starting with a power of two. Uh, and in that case, that means that there are two to the k minus one subarrays to be merged at stage k. If we had had the length of, of the original array not be a power of two, then an exactly even number of subdivision, then an exactly even number of subdivisions wouldn't have happened at every stage. And the last stage wouldn't have had a full set of subarrays, if you would. Merging looks pretty similar, but obviously it's happening in the opposite direction. So you want to read this picture from the bottom up. And we end up with a sorted array as the final product. You can see that all the way at the top of this image. Last, it's worth taking a look at the code for the merge helper method. Uh, here you can see the first half of that code. Uh, there's really three big steps for combining the two sorted subarrays into one larger sorted subarray. You know, the first subarray is between low and middle, and the second subarray is between middle plus one and high. Those are the bounds of the two subarrays that we're sorting. So those three steps, the first thing we do is we set up index pointers to the first items in each subarray. That's what's happening here in line 11. These positions are naturally low and middle plus one. So what are the starting positions of the two subarrays that we're putting back together? Then, starting with the first item in each subarray, we're going to go and repeatedly compare the items to one another. We copy whichever one is the smaller one, whichever value is the smallest, from its subarray to the copy buffer, and then we go on to the next item in that subarray. We do this until all the items have been copied from both of the subarrays. And if we get to the end of one of the subarrays before getting to the end of the other one, then we finish just by copying all the items that are left from that subarray into the copy buffer. 
You can see this happening in lines 15 through 24. Go ahead and pause the video and pick through it if you can. Finally, we copy everything in copy buffer between low and high back into the same positions, the corresponding positions in the array A. This is happening in lines 26 through 27. This is just taking the sorted version uh, and copying the correct range back into the original array to sort of re record our changes. That's how the merging is going to go. If it's helpful, pause on this slide and read through it. It's just a, a written explanation of what we just talked about. Now, if we want to think about the time complexity of merge sort, we have to break it down into two pieces. First, we got to think about the merge method. And that's essentially dominated by the two for loops, each of which is going to run high minus low plus one times. So that means that this method's runtime is roughly on the order of O of n. You know, all the merges at a single stage are going to take roughly n time. Now, the second part is to think that because merge sort splits the subarrays as evenly as possible at every stage, then we end up having O of log n number of stages. And so the maximum runtime for merge sort is on the order of n times log n. n for the running of merge and log n for the number of subdivisions we do. One nice thing to think about would be how you might improve merge sort. There's a couple ways you could consider. You can modify merge so that the first for loop makes a single comparison on each iteration. Now, there is also a somewhat complicated process that lets you merge two subarrays without using a copy buffer and without changing the order of the method. So, you know, you might look into that. Uh, that would also alleviate some of the space constraints that this algorithm places on us, having that extra copy buffer. And the last thing is, uh, subarrays below a certain size, you might want to use a different sorting algorithm on those subarrays. Uh, if you, particularly, this might make sense if you're thinking about uh, the relative complexities of uh, the two sorting algorithms, especially as they compare to merge sort for small n. That's it for today.